All right, if you got your Bibles, bust them out. We're going to go to Revelation uh, chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. If you're new here, we're going through the book of Revelation chapter by chapter, verse by verse. If you're not yet a Christian, welcome. We are about to study one of the most complicated books in the Bible. Okay? Uh, try, to, try to stay focused because there's some really interesting stuff that you're going to groove on. Okay? If you're a new Christian, just um, turn off your phone, okay? And just, just be, be attentive because you're going to be picking some things up and you're going you're gonna to appreciate it. Listen, this is God's word. With that being said, okay, this is apocalyptic literature that was given to John on the island of Patmos. He's taken up into a vision where he begins to see a lot of things that are symbolic, and with that being said, if one of you had a dream and came to our leadership team and we were to interpret that dream, you might get four or five different interpretations of your dream. And that's actually really fun. Doing dream, dream, inter dream interpretation is actually a lot of fun because you'll get these different interpretations and the interpretations complement each other. They become kind of a symphony or a multi-layered harmony and you end up with this really amazing picture. Okay, the same thing is true of God's Word and the book of Revelation. There are different interpretations of this book. Okay, in fact when we were studying, we're going to get into a little bit of review today, when we were studying the four horsemen of the apocalypse, that was one of the most difficult messages I've ever had to, had to do a, a, a study and sermon prep on. Because no matter who I read, okay, their interpretation of the text, was, everybody was radically different from each other. In fact, um, one person said, this is Christ. And another person said, this is the Antichrist. Okay? Not even the same team. So how can you have a figure that's Christ or is it the Antichrist? Yeah, that's kind of like a big deal, <laughs> right? So with that being said, anytime that we're going to approach this book, the book of Revelation, like we've got to do it with a lot of humility. And also, let me just say this, that I am not a professional. I know I look like one. I am a student of God's word. Okay, which means that as we were devouring the book of Genesis together, I was geeking out just as much as you were. I was learning. I was growing. Okay, same thing. As we're in the book of Revelation, I'm just like, whoa, whoa. And also, uh, pay attention here, uh, that it's the book of Revelation, not the book of Revelations. Why is that? Because the book of Revelation is the revelation of, of the Christ. So anytime we read the book of Revelation, what we're always trying to do is we're trying to find Jesus. We find Jesus, okay, and then we begin to look at the events surrounding Jesus. And this is what I love about the book of Revelation is that, all right, so in your Bible, in your New Testament, you got uh, the Gospels. You got Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Four different accounts of the same story. This is the life of Christ, okay? Um, but when you read the book of Revelation, you get the revelation and life of Christ, but it doesn't begin at his birth on the earth. It begins in the beginning in Genesis 1, and it even begins before the beginning. He is the one who was and is and is to come. And furthermore, when you read the book of Revelation, you begin to see the cosmic battle in the unseen realms that shrouded the entire story from his birth to his death to his resurrection. And we begin to see the implications of his death, burial, and resurrection and how it has radically transformed everything and is continuing to transform everything okay until the day that he got, that he comes when he finally gives the final blow to satan okay and all of his cronies okay so listen there will be a final reckoning if you will and the book of revelation captures that we're gonna we're gonna study that with that also being said it is interesting because 
uh, 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 Revelation is one of e either the most uh, received and accepted book uh, by, by a, a select few, but by many, many Christians, they would rather stay in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John and avoid the book of Revelation because it's just too catastrophic and too, too scary, okay? And for a lot of people where they're like, here's the book of Revelations in a nutshell. Everything is bad, okay? It gets worse, and then it gets worse, and then it gets worse. And then at a certain period of time, the rapture happens, and then God, and then God takes a blowtorch and just dis incinerates everything. <sighs> and he's just like, why did I do any of this? Ah! Right? And then he starts over. Okay, that's not the book of Revelation, okay? If that was the book, I could see why it's avoided, okay? But that's not the book of Revelation. Now, the reason why is that in 1909, there's a guy by the name of uh, Schofield, okay? You might know the Schofield Bible, Cyrus Schofield, and he came up, he was the originator of what's called dispensationalism, by which he came up with seven dispensations. It says that seven points in the Bible by which God changes the way that he interacts with, humili with humanity because of these different dispensations. So that's why you see almost seven different interactions between God and humanity because of the various covenants and agreements and what is taking place um, within, within the Bible. It's also Schofield that for the very first time in 1909, really the idea of a rapture begins to penetrate uh, the church. Now, the, the, the Pentecostalism is experiencing a, a, a resurgence on the earth. This is when we, we have the Azusa Street Revival happening at the same time, okay, within the same area. We also have the, the Welsh Revival happening at the same time. Now, Schofield was not a fan of any of that. Schofield was a cessationist, so uh, the founder of dispensationalism, but also cessationist. In that, Schofield did not believe that God has given to the church the office of the apostle and prophet, okay? Um, he also did not believe in the supernatural gifts, the, in the grace gifts at work uh, within uh, the church. So it's, it's fascinating that um, here you have a theologian that, that, that did not believe in this supernatural gifts or in the offices, these things that we celebrate as the Pentecostal uh, church today, and yet Pentecostalism adopted dispensationalism and the rapture theology, okay, and, and even through the guys like um, William Branham, who we celebrate um, the supernatural power of God within his life, that he would take classic dispensationalism, take the four horses of the apocalypse, lay it out on a futuristic timeline, say that there are all these things that the early church fathers did not believe in, but began to take these things, say, it's okay, like, like, like we're not going to take his view on um, on the gifts, okay? We're not going to take his view on the role of the apostles and prophets, but we will take his view on the end times and we will borrow his eschatology and make it traditional, classic, Pentecostal eschatology. And so I know I gave you a lot there, but the reason why I'm saying this is that when we start to look at like the four horsemen of the apocalypse like we did last week, and then we begin to say, okay, these are, these are four timelines laid out within the future, okay? And what this is, is this is a form of, this is the great tribulation, okay? A, a great tribulation is coming, okay? Then all of a sudden, you got to put yourself into a camp, okay? Are you part of the camp that says, nope, Jesus is going to get us out of here before the, before the tribulation happens, okay? If that is the case, you are not going to know what to do with suffering, why? When times get tough, okay, you'll say, God, you were supposed to get me out of here, okay? When anything starts to happen, anything starts to happen on the news, you'll say, this is it. This is it. I knew this was going to happen. Here we go. This is bad. This is bad. Pick up the phone. This is bad. This, this isn't just bad. It's going to get worse, okay? It, when you find yourself in these camps, okay, you're always looking for the bad. Why? You're expecting it. Your faith is for the bad. It's, it's bad. This is bad. And it's going to get worse. Ah! Just always... Tweak, <laughs> right? <laughs> Here we go. Ah, okay. He's going to get us out. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Okay. Stay out of the city. Cities are bad. This is bad. It's going to get worse, right? Get, get top ramen. Get my light. Let's hide. Ah. Antichrist, you know, the mark of the beast. Okay. Starbucks app. Ah, you know, COVID. This is the end. What horse was COVID? Okay. And then all of a sudden we're like, wait, COVID wasn't the pale horse. Okay. COVID was just a train of flu. We got lied to. Ah, we got duped. This whole thing was about money and, and everything else, okay? You with me? But how many of us were trying to take 2020 and put it onto the four horsemen? All right. So if you take a bunch of classical Pentecostal uh, timeline teaching from the four horsemen, you're going to find 
that there ain't any two definitions that really line up. And your expectation is going to be for future calamity, and then you're going to try to put yourself into a camp. Do we get out before? Pre-trib. Do we get out somewhere in the middle? Mid-trib. Or do we get out at the end? We've got to go through the whole thing. And once we've survived the whole thing, uh, I'm still standing. Right? Beat me up. Right? There we go. Okay? And if you find yourself in one of those camps, awesome, welcome, good, you're part of Eden, okay? Uh, there are good people, people, that look, leaders in our church, okay, that, that fall into the, 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 the different kind of camp, okay? That's all good. The, at the end of the day, we believe that Jesus is king, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is coming back, hallelujah, that the Bible is the infallible word of God, hallelujah. Um, but just so you know, okay, uh, that, that my expectation isn't for a kind of calamity that inspires rejoicing that the prophecy of Jesus is being fulfilled or satisfied through tribulation and calamity. And the reason why is that, like, as I've been diving into this, as we look at the, the uh, review of last week super quick, you're going to see that there is a historical accounting that satisfies a lot of what Jesus prophesied as to what would be experienced in his own generation. And there's a reason why some of this was prophesied within his own generation, okay? And so we're going to see that the early church who received this letter, the book of Revelation, it was written to the early church, but given for us. So say this out loud. It's to them, for us. Yeah, so the church needed this letter. We need this letter, okay? Um, when they receive this letter, they're going to receive very detailed prophetic accounts of things that they're going to experience in their generation, okay? And there are massive parts of this letter that have still yet to be uh, fulfilled. And we find ourselves in a very important part of human history, okay? The era of the church age or the apostolic age where we have been commissioned by Jesus himself to go into all the world and make disciples of nations, Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go. So Revelation chapter 6, now I watched when the lamb, everyone say the lamb. Who's this lamb figure? Okay. Um, Revelation chapter 5, John goes up into the throne room. Uh, it, it's something's taking place in the heavens. Uh, there's a historical moment that takes place in the heavens in Revelation chapter 5. In Revelation chapter 5, there's the revealing of a scroll, a scroll with seven seals. But no one is worthy to receive this scroll. So John begins to weep. And he says, I saw that there was no one worthy to receive of this, of this scroll. And then I hear a declaration. And the declaration is, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. And as I turned to see the lion, when I, when I turned to see it, I didn't see a lion. I saw a lamb. Interesting. So he's turning to see this bold, majestic lion. Here he is. Right? All the intercessors. Pull your shofars. And he turns and he sees a lamb. And not just a lamb. But in the Greek, it could be translated like a lambkin, a baby lamb. Okay? So here's the lion. The lion of the tribe. Turn around. The wrath of the man. And not only is it a, a baby lamb, it's a slain baby lamb. Wow. All right. Now, the lamb is worthy to receive the scroll, but the scroll has seven seals, like wax seals, like kingly wax seals, okay? And now, the seals, that's not the content. The seal is, is the seals are not the data. The data is in the scroll. The seals are there to protect the scroll so that only the eyes of the intended reader can read. This is a classified document for the, for the eyes of the lamb only. What is this, this scroll? This is the lamb's scroll, okay? This is the lamb's book. And only the lamb gets to receive of the, of the scroll. So the lamb receives the scroll. And I know what you're thinking. How does the lamb receive a scroll? Lambs don't have thumbs. The lamb holds out its little lamb thing. Okay, goes to receive the scroll, and the scroll hits the floor. So how does a lamb take a scroll? Okay, this is called symbolism, my friends. Okay, this isn't a literal lamb. Okay, this is Jesus. 
Okay? And now this is how we're learning to read Revelation. We're seeing that it is full of symbolism. And when we read the Lamb, we see Jesus. Jesus receives the scroll. And then there's the breaking of the seven seals. Okay? As these seals are broken, okay, there is implication. Uh, the seals are broken in the heavens. Okay? And the corresponding reality unfolds on the earth. So with each breaking, okay, this is going to be, okay, it's okay. Don't be distracted by that vase that just broke. <laughs> I brought my flowers to church. Okay. Um, with the breaking of each seal, this is going to be the unrolling of the Lamb's scroll, okay, which is what? It's the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. This is the gospel of the good news for all of creation is about to be swallowed up into the lamb's scroll. Okay, awesome. So that's the lamb. Behold the lamb. Now I watched the lamb open one of the seven seals and I heard one of the four living creatures say, come. And I looked and behold a white horse. Say white horse. Good. That's the first horse. And its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the, the second living creature say, Come. And out came the second horse. Okay. Its color was red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth so that people should slay one another, and he was given a great sword. Okay, so a white horse, a red sword, horse. When he opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come, and I look, and behold, a black horse. And its rider had a pair of scales in his hand. I heard what seemed to be like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for denarius, and three quarts of barley for denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come, and behold, a, a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. And they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence. Okay, so when we are looking at this, we see the Lamb. Okay, the revealing of the Lamb, the, the ascension of the Lamb, the enthronement of the Lamb. We see the elders responding. We talked about the, the transition in the heavens from, from angelic elders to, to, to human uh, elders. And, we, we, and, and so much happening here um, within this text. And then we see the breaking of, of the seals. And we see here four horsemen. And yes, this is the famous, okay, this is the four horsemen of the apocalypse, okay? One of the freakiest, some of the freakiest imagery uh, in the Bible of these four different colors of, uh, of horses, okay? And they're being released. What are these? These are plagues that are being released on the earth and they're being released from the throne room. They're being released from the Lamb, okay? When you hear plagues, what do you think? We think Moses. We think God's people uh, uh, in slavery to Egypt. We think of Pharaoh, okay? We, uh, Pharaoh would not let God's people go. So the Lord begins to release uh, these plagues on Egypt for the sake of liberation, to set his people free, and for the sake of restoration of his people to their promised land. The same thing is true here. We're going to see these four plagues that are going to be released onto the earth, that the early church is going to see these four horses released in their own generation. And what's the purpose of these four horsemen? It's the same purpose, to bring forth liberation, okay? And through this liberation, there's going to be a cosmic shift in the heavens. We got into that a little bit last week. We're going to be teasing that out all over the next few weeks. Why? Principalities and powers need to come into proper alignment now that the king above all kings has been enthroned on his throne. And we are talking about the lamb. Now that the lamb, 
Lamb is seated on the throne, it is time for the stars to fall. It is time for principalities and powers to shift so that nations can be opened to receive the scroll of the Lamb. This is just so stinking cool. Why? Because principalities and powers, they still exist. They still have legal authority um, uh, in, in cities and nations. Okay, even our own city, even our own nation has principalities and powers, and yet we do not operate underneath their jurisdiction. Why? Because of the Lamb that was seated on the throne. He is the King above all kings, the Lord above all lords. He was the one who was and is and is to come and his death burial and resurrection changed everything truly a cosmic shift that is captured in the book of revelation and because of what has happened in the heavens everything is different on the earth in our participation with the scroll of the lamb okay when we go to india we are participating with the authority of the lamb within that nation which means what we do not Fear principalities and powers in that nation. Why? We are diplomats of the kingdom. Amen. And this is how we read the Bible. We don't read the Bible through seven different dispensations and a God who changes his personality based off of the covenant. We read the Bible through the lenses of the kingdom. Woo. <laughs> okay? We read the Bible that everything has changed. Listen, Moses and Abraham and Isaiah and David, they did not live a part of the kingdom of God. That was not the era of the kingdom. They were having to rule with limited revelation. They hadn't been given uh, this revelation. They, they, had, they had different words from the Lord. Listen, when the king was seated on the throne upon the glorification and enthronement of the lamb, at that point, that began the era of the kingdom. Do you see that? And now we need to read the teachings of Jesus. Why? Because every time that Jesus taught, he would talk about the gospel of the... It's not just the gospel. We love... We, it, we love the, the gospel means good news. It's not just good news. It is the gospel of the kingdom, which means what? Upon... Okay, I'm going to teach you about the reality that is coming and yet is not yet. I'm going to teach you about the reality that is going to unfold upon my death, resurrection, and ascension. Once my blood is, is splattered on the mercy seat, and once I am enthroned, then begins the era of the kingdom. And then, now it makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, it's like a mustard seed. That's quite small, isn't it? And yet it grows. It's like yeast, okay? A little bit of yeast and it affects, it affects the whole. The kingdom of God, start to read the teachings of Jesus. And guess what you'll see? You'll see the importance of the expanding, growing kingdom of God. And now that's how we read our Bible, isn't it? We read our Bible not through seven different dispensations. We read our Bible with this concept that since the very beginning, all he has ever wanted was a family. Since the beginning, all he has ever wanted was a home. And guess what, my friends? Heaven will come to the earth. We will see the Jewish people awakened. They will, they will see and turn to Messiah, Romans 11. We will see the one new man, Jew and Gentile, ruling. To, this is not a replacement uh, of, of, of the Jewish people, okay? This is not, is, is it Israel up here or the Gentiles up here? No, no, no. This is one new man, the new creation reality, born again with sin and nations crying out come Lord Jesus come and 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 and, and Satan and his cronies and principalities and, and powers hanging on for whatever shred of authority they think they still has as Jesus comes and executes his divine justice his divine judgment and overthrows every shred of darkness that has been on the earth oh shoot spoiler alert Sorry, I, you're not supposed to say the end of the movie, kind of ruin it for everybody. Just in case you haven't read the end, we win. Yeah. So what do we see? We see literal conquest, the white horse. 
We see literal bloodshed on the earth, unprecedented bloodshed. We see famine, okay? We see death and pestilence. Remember uh, that when the early church would read this text, when they hear the earth, okay, when they hear the world, uh, they didn't have Discovery Channel, okay? They couldn't follow the science back then, okay? Um, because they didn't have Discovery Channel and everything Discovery Channel says is true, okay? So when, when the early church um, uh, uh, would hear the earth, uh, they would read this through the lens of, of the known world. They believed that Israel was the center of the known world, that Zion was the center of the known world. That's what we're going to read about the islands in, in this, and, and that was translated as the Gentiles and these, these places outside of, of, of their known world. So I want you to keep that in mind even as, uh, as we're reading. We continue in uh, verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, okay, interesting, under the altar, the souls who had been slain for the word of God and for the witnesses they had borne. And they cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. This is interesting. Um, what's happening here? Uh, the breaking of the fifth seal. Uh, the, the revealing of the blood of the martyrs that is crying out for vindication. Okay, the blood of the martyrs that is crying out for justice. Okay, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, the response of the martyrs that something has changed. Why? The martyr of martyrs has provided a pathway of ascension through his own blood. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to take you to Matthew 23, uh, looking at verses 29 to 39. Okay, where there's going to be a rebuke from Jesus uh, to, the, to the Pharisees and the scribes. And I'll have our team put it up on the screen just in case you don't want to uh, go there. Because I realize it's getting a little later in the afternoon and your page flipping fingers might be a little tired. So here we go. This is Jesus. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Now, hit pause. I would never say that because I'm a Christian. This is Jesus that said it, okay? All right, here we go. For you build the tombs of the prophets, okay? And, uh, and, des and, 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 and de desecrate the monuments of the righteous, saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus, you witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Wow, okay. Verse 34. Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. The altar that's mentioned there, yeah? Verse 36, look at this. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon you in this generation. Okay? Verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as hens gather her brood under her wings and you were not willing see your house is left to you desolate for I tell you you will not see me again until you say blessed is he who comes in the name 
of the Lord. It continues on, and, and they begin to ask him, hey, when will the end of the temple come? And Jesus prophesies the end of the, of the temple uh, in, uh, in Jerusalem. This particular text is talking about the blood from Abel all the way to Zechariah, and he says, you will reap the justice or punishment of the blood of the martyrs that is on your hands. Okay, we also know that, uh, that by this point in time, by the time that the church has received uh, this scroll of Revelation, the Revelation of Christ, the Apostle James has already been killed as a martyr. Uh, we also know Stephen, okay, uh, killed as a martyr, okay? They're, the church is going to continue to see uh, martyrdom all the way into uh, the Jewish wars, escalating all the way to um, A.D. 70. And here we see, okay, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the scene of an altar, okay? And here we see a uh, 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 coming from the ground, okay? The, the blood of the martyrs crying out uh, for, uh, for vindication, okay? And we see in the heavens, okay, in the heavens of, of heavens, the exaltation, the enthronement of the Lamb, and the enthronement of the Lamb, and the breaking of the seals arouses the hopes of the martyrs. They're saying, surely now is the time. They're saying, this lamb looks like us. The, the martyrs, like Christ, had also lost their lives because of the gospel, because of the scroll of the lamb. And we see uh, the Christ slaughtered on an altar, ascending up onto and into the throne room, into the most holy place, the holy of holies, the slain lamb coming up and being seated on the ark throne. And aware that the lamb has been slain and now stands in heavens, the martyrs want to follow in that same path. And we see uh, 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 this, this, this cry out. And, and, and what's interesting is here are those who have lost their lives because they have prophesied the word of the Lord of Messiah is coming. The Lamb is coming. Okay? And, and here are those that lived and died and did not see the fulfillment of their prophetic words. Okay? Think about that. Generation. Think about this. The same prophetic word generation after generation not seeing fulfillment. Obviously, they're false prophets, Right? Because we in America know that if a prophetic word is not fulfilled in a four-year political cycle, that's a false prophet, right? Like here in America, we know that you only get four years for a prophetic word to be true or not. Imagine the original Old Testament prophets. And they have prophesied these realities, and they have been waiting, and the blood of the martyrs is crying out for vindication. Where does that vindication come from? Where does that justice come from? That justice comes from the fulfillment of the word of the Lord as seen through Messiah, the Lamb, who is slain on the earth, who resurrected ascended and brings a trail of blood up okay uh, from the from the heaven to earth from earth to heaven and creates a pathway of ascension through the blood of the lamb for the martyrs to be clothed in robes of white and this is what we see here we see cleansing taking place on the on the mercy seat we see the blood of Jesus taking place on the mercy seat. The blood of Jesus then flowing from the altar from heaven into the earth. We see this in the Old Testament, um, the act of cleansing, the act of purification, and then the, and then the, the, the incense of worship, okay, and the ascension into the peace of Yahweh. Okay? We see this in the Old Testament. We see this reality even in the church today. We come together. Okay? The early church would come together in each other's homes. There'd be, the conf there'd be confession. There'd be confession of sin. There'd be bringing things into the light. And then there'd be a, a, a standing in the place together in the corporate assembly, pure, clean, 
cleansed, and then corporate ascension together as the body of Christ boldly into the presence of Yeshua. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain, who has provided a pathway for all of humanity to come to taste and see that he is good. Fascinating. And, uh, and we are just scratching the surface. So go back, and, and there's so many different, um, but I'm, I'm going to wrap this I'm going to wrap this up in, in 10 minutes. Is that good? Well, I'll try. So then let's look at the sixth seal that is broken here. Now, the sixth seal begins here, but then it continues. So the sixth seal, we're going to get into the 144,000 next week. Okay, so we see the beginning of the breaking of the sixth seal. It was funny. I was driving to church. Peter and Abigail, they're on the worship team, okay, today. And didn't they do good? They were awesome. And Hannah was on the worship team. And Hannah did so good. So our kids are here. And I had to get them here at, at 7 a.m. And so we're driving here at like... You know, uh, yeah, some, something. We, 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 we had to leave early, and the kids are in the car, and, and Abigail says to me, she goes, Dad, what are you preaching on today? I said, I'm preaching on the blood of the martyrs that are crying out for vindication, and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and I'm also preaching on the removal of the firmament and the destruction of the heavens and earth. And they're like, all right, good luck with that. All right, good. <laughs> you go, Dad. <laughs> all right. So the sixth seal, the removal of the firmament, the throwing down, the casting down of the stars, and the destruction of, 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 of the world, okay? You ready? I, I saved the best for last. This is so good. Okay, the last seven minutes and 22 seconds. Here we go. And when he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as sack, as sack cloth. Look at the full moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a rolling scroll that is being rolled up. Okay. And every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful, everyone slaved and free, they hid themselves in caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay. For those of us that are in the church, we hear the wrath of the Lamb. We're like, yeah, we just accept that. We, but again, for those of you that are new to the church, okay, or, or like a new Christian, you're like, the wrath of the man, you know? Yeah, this is revelation, man. The wrath of Terminator Lamb, right? It's just like, you, listen, a human could never make this up. Like, it is just, this is like, it is mind-blowing revelation. Okay, the wrath of the Lamb. Wow. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who can stand? Okay, so this is the beginning of the breaking of the sixth seal. There will be more that we begin to unpack um, on this. Um, uh, it's interesting here that uh, we see a lot of over overlap from things that Jesus actually talked about. And we see a lot of overlap from what's referred to as the day of the Lord, as well as the great war in Jerusalem of, of AD uh, 70. And we're going to get into more details um, on that. We scratched the surface on that last week. But there's a lot of imagery in what takes place there in the destruction of Jerusalem that Josephus, early church historian, even points to various signs in the heavens. Anyways, the parallel that you'll find is when you look at Good Friday, the day that Christ was, was crucified, Okay, and then you look at the day of the Lord, and then you look at the war of AD 70 and the similarities that take place there. Tied to into the breaking of the sixth seal. A great earthquake, right? A great eclipse, or all of a sudden the, the sun shorts out. Imagine that. Imagine the sun just being like, and the sun's gone. Okay? All right, so what is this? This is Matthew 27, 51 and 52. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Remember, this is kind of the end. Well, according to Jesus, who cried out from the cross, it is finished. Okay, and why did it have to be finished? Because we were entering into what? 
a new beginning. And the only way into the kingdom is to be what? Born again. That means the old has to go so the new can come. This is water baptism. The old you in the ground and the water, the new you coming out, made possible by this moment. The curtain being torn from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, right? What's that? It's an earthquake. Guess what else it says? And the rocks were split. And not only that, but the tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Wow. Imagine that. Earthquake, the sun shorts out, tombs opening, and the spirits of the saints, here we are. Right? And of course they were singing. I can't wait to make that movie. It's going to, you know, Ascension, the musical, right? Resurrection, the musical. Okay. Maybe that won't happen. Luke 23, uh, 44 to 46. Now, it was about the sixth hour. Look at, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour when the sun's light did what? It failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I will commit my spirit. Right? This is uh, the mention in Revelation 6 about the stars uh, falling. Okay? The firmament being uh, removed. Okay? Remember, the firmament, we talked about this in Genesis. This is the lens. Okay? This is this is the heavens, if you will, okay? Uh, and there's all this prophetic imagery of stars falling, okay? The scroll being rolled up and, uh, and, and, and all your political leaders, all your political powers in caves crying out for the rocks to crush them. All right. Um, go study the fig thing. Very interesting. Maybe we'll do a Facebook Live on that, but I don't have time necessarily to get into that. He talks about the islands, okay? The islands were seen by the Jewish people as the outpost of Israel's land, okay? Uh, the islands are referred to as the outer areas of the Gentiles, okay? The Old Test in the Old Testament, people saw themselves as the Jewish people, Israel, the center of the world, and the Gentile nations as those around the perimeter. Okay? All of a sudden, we begin to see the collapse of the world. Right? Not necessarily. What we begin to see is the collapse of their world or a world. This is the end of their political universe. This is the end of that particular system. This, this was not seen as the end of the Jewish age. Okay? That is, not, that is not what I'm saying. That is not what the early church believed. But this is certainly the age, the end of an evil empire, the end of, of, of an era, and a new reality is about to begin. Yes, um, the, the early world, if you will, the ancient world, they saw the calendar of the stars, all things firmament as needed for governing times and seasons. But what we see here is the falling of the stars, the falling of these political powers, even possibly uh, uh, alluding to the falling, how many know that the stars biblically are seen as an angelic class? Uh, and we're going to get into that later in Revelation where it talks about the dragon's tail wiping out the, the stars, okay? And, uh, and that, I believe, is fully the, the demotion of ruling entities, okay, as final authority within their jurisdiction to open things up for God's people. Okay? But we're going to see these realities. Yes, this is the end of a world, but not the end of of the world. And as you look at the prophecies of Jesus, and as you look at the four horses, conquest is coming. Yeah, that happened. Bloodshed is coming. Yeah, that happened. Uh, over one, Josephus said, said over 1.1 million Jews were executed during the Jewish war. Okay, the destruction of the temple, that was prophesied. That happened. They burned the temple. The fire was so hot that they say that it, it melted the gold of the temple with the stone where you couldn't discern what was gold and what was stone. You see, all of these, uh, all of these things that were spoken of, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming, and it came. And for this reason, when we read this text, we're not, we're not taking 
the four horsemen here and saying that is to come. We are saying, no, these are the seals that were broken so that the scroll of the gospel of the kingdom could be unrolled. This was literal plagues for the purpose of salvation and liberation that Jesus is the true and perfect Moses, okay, that had a plan to redeem and to restore. It's very fascinating. How do we look at the, at the earth? How do we look at the world? How do we read the scriptures? We do it through the lens of Ephesians chapter 1, where it talks about, about, about Jesus, uh, who lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us, this is Ephesians 1, 9, making known to us the mystery of his will. Just say the mystery of his will which is what? According to his purpose. So this is the mystery of his will and his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. Okay? So Jesus was the catalyst of the mystery, okay, of the Father, okay, set forth, catalyzed by Christ as what? As a plan for the fullness of time. To do what? To unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on the earth. This is the Lamb plan. This is the plan of the Father, that all things in heaven and on earth would be, would be engulfed by the cosmic, intergalactic good news of the kingdom, that the death, burial, and resurrection of the Christ, of the Lamb, has changed everything. And now we are positioned as the church to steward this mustard seed little by little that we are the leaven in the culture a little bit of us can change everything that our expectation is not calamity but my friends calamity will come our expectation is not suffering but my friends suffering will come the suffering isn't fulfillment of our eschatology the suffering is just a reality that until the time comes when Jesus comes again there will be wars there will be famine there will be earthquakes there will be kings raging war against kings these are the birth pains even now all of creation is groaning and waiting for the revealing and the awakening of the new breed of sons that replace the old sons, the fallen sons, the hybrid sons, the sons that were up in the hood and up to no good. We are the sons of God. We are the sons of the Father. We are sons of inheritance. Hallelujah. We stand not because of our own holiness. We stand not by our own righteousness that he who knew no sin became all of your sin so that you could be the righteousness of Christ. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. He who came from heaven to earth who died, who ascended and left a blood trail from the earth up into the heavens. We join with all creation saying come, 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 Lord Jesus, restore that which is lost. Restore that which is broken. Can we stand together this morning? Listen now, despite what you've been told, good people don't go to heaven. Nope, forgiven people go to heaven. This I know for a fact. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what we all have in common. We have all sinned. We have all done a lot of jacked up doo-doo. Yes, I'm talking about you. You, know, you might be saying, well, I, I'm not as bad of a sinner as, you know, we, we tend to like to put ourselves into camps and say, well, at least I'm not that guy. There are good people and bad people. No, they're just people that are more private than others. Okay? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That means that sin puts you on a trajectory of dying. Okay? You're either dying or you're living. You're either going from glory to glory or you're going from decay to decay. But the Bible says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says that the gift of God is life. Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you would have life and life abundantly. 
That means Jesus said, I did not come just to meet your needs. I came to exceed your needs so that the blessing in your life can overflow so that you can be a blessing to the community around you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, that means you have to believe it and you got to speak it. If you say, Jesus is Lord, I believe he died on a cross for all my sins, the Bible says he'll be faithful and just to forgive you. Okay, so why don't we all just bow our heads and all close our eyes. And Jesus, I just invite you just to come in your glory right now. Holy Spirit, would you come in here like a cloud from the back of the room to the front of the room. Angels of God, come and do your thing. You are the, the messenger angels of Christ sent from the throne room to reveal the Lamb. Come right now. Come right now. And I pray that those who are wrestling with a mind-blinding spirit that would keep them from seeing you for who you are I right now by faith bind every mind blinding spirit that would keep you from the kind of truth that brings freedom that truth is Christ I bind you now spirit of distraction spirit of fear spirit of overwhelm spirit of disappointment spirit of offense I bind you now in the name of Jesus I say move aside right now in the name of Jesus and I declare not just peace but perfect peace peace in its fullness to come upon you from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet even those that came into this room with disease on your body with injury in your bones with disappointment in your gut I declare right now the kind of peace that would set you free that you can taste and see that he is good so that you can receive his grace and be set free by his life right now in Jesus name every unclean thing come off of you right now come off of your mind right now every dirty thing let go of your bones right now even legions on the bones of being healed right now even even spots even spots that are not supposed to be there internal spots I see some sort of blood clotting thing uh, that's taking place in somebody's body I curse those blood clots right now in the name of Jesus I curse that blood clot right now those clots right now I I curse those things right now I say let them go right now in Jesus name I even see I even see a a generational curse that has come through the bloodline that that got activated by a trauma just this last year and you feel like just in this last year you have turned into your mom and a lot of the health problems that your mom walked in you are now walking in there was a trauma that took place in the last 12 to 18 months that activated a generational curse in your life and I'm telling you that curse is not of Jesus that curse is of the thief okay and and he will break the power of that curse in your life um, who is that wait at me I was gonna have you come at the end but who is that yeah come here come here, come here. This, yeah just stand right there who else who else just, there was a trauma something that just happened in the last 12 to 18 months and it, and it, and it flipped a switch where you, where you, where you found your health de decaying and, and, and things shifting it's accelerated aging even in the last year is it, no? yeah come on up yeah just stand right here come on up thank you Lord Jesus is going to judge that today yet that is not of the Holy Spirit that is not for you thank you Lord thank you listen if it's you don't come to me at the end and say that was me okay I don't want to hear it. If that's you I want you to come right here right now there is an anointing to break that heavy yoke right here right now so if you do not come right now I don't know if things will shift and change in your life you need to respond by by an act of obedience right now thank you Lord 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 you see it's not just about the study of the word it is about the demonstration of the word it's not just a study of his power it's the implementation of his power hallelujah that means he doesn't want you just to know about him he wants you to experience the benefits of his suffering how do you know that he suffered so that you can step out of your suffering and into life let's pray let's all pray this together just say I break agreement with the belief system of the thief the thief lied to me he said this is just the way it has to be some of you you've even heard this lie this is just a part of aging 
I want you to break the power of that lie right now. Just say, I renounce the lie. That this suffering is a normal part of aging. I receive the truth that I am in union with Christ. I receive the benefits of his crucified body into my body right now. Okay, by faith, I just want you to receive the benefits of his crucified body into your body right now. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And I just declare of you, okay, right now, by his stripes, loose. By his stripes, loose. By his stripes, loose right now. By his stripes, right now. Loose right now. By his stripes, loose right now. By his stripes, right now. Loose right now. I said by his stripes, right now. There it is. There it is. Loose, 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 loose. Right now. Right now. By his stripes. By his stripes. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. By his stripes. There it goes. By his stripes. By his stripes. By his stripes. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just pray this with me. Every generational curse was nailed to the cross. Say it again. Every generational curse was nailed to the cross. My Savior became a curse so I could be liberated. I said 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 liberated. Satan, I rebuke you now. I rebuke you now. I rebuke you now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. I said right now. Let her go in Jesus' name. Let her go. More fire. More fire. Right now. Loose right now. Loose right now. All the way. Not 50%. Not 60%. Not 70%. 100% healed right now in Jesus' name. I I loose you from that death curse right now in Jesus' name. Loose right now in Jesus' name. Loose right now. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Loose. Loose right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Loose right now. Right now. You are not cursed. You are blessed, says the Lord. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed right now. Thank you, Lord. Yep. I see you being loose from the curse of the law. Yep. Yep. And loose into the blessing of your inheritance. The Lord says he has inheritance for you. Hallelujah. Inheritance. You're a daughter of you're a daughter of inheritance. You're a daughter of inheritance. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's more. Step into the fullness of your inheritance. Hallelujah. Ha. On, on behalf of Jim. On behalf of Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jim. yeah, 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 yeah. We loose you, Jim. We loose you. We loose you from every curse. From every curse. Broken. He became a curse so that you could be free. Jim, we declare liberty, 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 liberty in Jesus' name. Yep, Father, in Jesus' name, I loose my sister right now from all the curse. Hey, I loose her into life right now. Loose her into life right now. Life assignment. I declare a life assignment. Breaking of, 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 the, of the word choice in the contract, in a death contract that was in your family line. That, that very specific, I don't know if it's, if it's masonry, Freemasonry or something like that. I break it now in Jesus' name. I see the blood of Jesus erasing every word right now in Jesus' name. I see the rewriting of a life contract. Hallelujah. It's written in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hey, but a dream come true is a tree of life. Oh, I just declare an end to the hope deferred. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this tree of life. So I unattach you. I unattach you. We untether you from all hope deferred right now. We loose you into life right now. Loose you into life abundantly right now. Loose you into blessing. Hallelujah. Blessing. Blessing right now. More. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Right now. We unattach you. We unattach you. We untether you from hope deferred right now. From hope deferred right now. Devil, you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. I expose every lie right now. Everything spoken against you. Even things said to you as a small child that you received to be factual, that were not factual. I hear, I hear uh, woman, you've been lied to. You've been lied to. You have been lied to. And I see the Lord coming to you as a kind father to tell you the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And from this point forward, your expectation will be to receive truth. People are even going to start telling you the truth. People are going to just start admitting the truth. <laughs> and you're going to say, this is different. In the past, there's been patterns of perpetual liars. 
who give you false information. I see that there's been a pattern of fake news in your life. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I say, as of today, with the breaking of this curse, no more fake news in your life. Hallelujah. 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 You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. I even see, I even see uh, some, this, this trauma thing, this trauma thing that, that activated this degeneration. I see the blood of Jesus and the fire of God, the dunamis power of God coming upon that trauma to remove that, that splinter from the record of your storyline right now. In Jesus' name, let the blood of Jesus come into that trauma right now to remove the, the record to remove that lie from your scroll right now in Jesus name remove it right now more, yeah more blood look more blood right now right now right now thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Father Father in Jesus name I loose your deliverance right now I loose your deliverance right now I loose your deliverance right now come and break every heavy yoke come and break every heavy yoke and right now Lord, I rebuke the enemy that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And I loose right now a life assignment, the record of life, the record of life, the record of hope, the record of reconciliation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're, you're, you're taking them out of the decay cycle, and you're taking them into life and life abundantly. Glory unto glory. Glory unto glory. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I loose your healing touch right now. I loose your healing touch right now. I loose your healing touch right now. I curse the root of trauma right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, and I loose you into life and light in the name, in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb right now. Yeah, loosing you from the record of suffering right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. More, Lord, all the way, all the way, from the top of her head, yep, all the way down to the soles of her feet, a realignment right now, realignment right now, all the way, 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 Lord, let that dunamis go all the way to her toes right now. Let that dunamis go all the way to her toes right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All the way, all the way, right now, all the way, right now, the dunamis power, I see it like the electricity of God. Ah, ha, 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 right now, right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Father, I, in Jesus' name, I curse that trauma that tried to unroll a record of suffering that is not in alignment with, Lord, your plan and purpose for her life. Lord, we break the record of any generational curses. Hallelujah. Going all the way back to Adam <laughs> right now in Jesus' name. We declare the blood of the Lamb, wow, who is slain, who rewrites your family genealogy. Ah, yeah, it, it, who, who has reestablished your union in Christ right now in Jesus' name. I, I unyoke you right now from every generational curse right now. I, re, I, re, I unyoke you. Yep, from the, from the yoke of suffering. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, right now, loose. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose right now. Loose right now. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. We call you into truth right now. Call you into truth right now. I call you into truth right now. I call you into truth right now in Jesus' name. Hey, if you're still here, and thank you for the people that are still here, just lift up your hands in this place. Let's come into agreement. Father, in Jesus' name, we seek your wisdom and revelation for this week. We seek the blueprint of heaven for Newcastle. We ask, oh God, that you would give us your grace to stand in the power of your might, not by our might, not by our power, but by your spirit, King Jesus. We ask, oh God, that even this week, those bound by a mind-blinding spirit would be enlightened to the lamb who was slain, would meet their good and perfect shepherd this week. We lift up our elders in the church. We lift up our board. We lift up um, our directors. Lord, we lift up our deacons. We lift up our intercessors. We lift up our pastoral team. We declare the blood of Jesus over Eden. We declare the blood of Jesus over Eden North. We thank you, Lord, that we wrestle not against principalities. I'm uh, sorry, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and things in the second heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your third heaven plan for Newcastle, for our region, 
for this week for our staff as, as they're at retreat, Lord. We ask, oh God, that the mind of Christ would be unrolled like a scroll. Lord, that the plans and purposes of heaven for this region, for our generation, would be downloaded, Father, into our team. Lord, we seek the peace of God for Jerusalem. Lord, we seek your peace, Lord, for Jerusalem, even in the midst of this conflict. We pray the prayer of Jesus. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All the people of God said, amen, amen and amen. If our uh, prayer ministry team would come, we want to pray for you. We want to stand with you. Uh, come on up. Uh, otherwise, we will be back tonight. Pastor Greg is going to be leading a Father's Day encounter. So if you need an encounter with Father God, come tonight at 6 p.m. It's going to be an encounter night. It's going to be awesome. I call you blessed of the Lord and highly favored.